Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Talking Cubs. I'm your host Ryan Davis, and I'll be joined in a moment by my co-host Sean Sears. We are doing another player preview for one of our guys in the starting rotation. Today we're talking about the Cubs ace of the staff, John Lester. Sean, do you think John can continue to beat his peripheral stats, or are we going to see a little bit of regression from Lester this year? I think we might see some regression from John Lester just because it's a natural kind of thing here at this point. This guy's going into his age 33 season, I believe. 35. Jeez. Um, oh, my God. That's crazy to me. Like, he's 35 years old, and he's still one of the best pitchers out there. Um, his biggest his biggest uh, issue, and I guess his strength at the same time, is his command. Um, if John Lester's commanding his pitches and able to – hit the corners and get ahead of batters, uh, he should have no problem getting them out. It's just that when he's not hitting his spots and when he can't necessarily get that pitch on the corner or on the black, um, he does run into some issues just because he's not missing as many bats. And we've seen it over the last couple of years. The peripheral stats last year were really telling, even though he won to the all-star game. Um, I think we all kind of saw the regression coming despite his solid, you know, I think it was a sub-230 ERA. Um, great stuff. I mean, he's still the leader of this staff. He's still – the guy everyone's going to plan on leading on, he's still going to probably be able to pitch 180 innings plus. There, there should be no problem with that. It's just how effective he's going to be in those innings is what I think most people are concerned about. Yeah, and you know, you bring up regression and and some of the peripheral stats. Uh, it's really interesting. He made 32 starts in both 2017 and 2018. His innings totals for each season really close: 180 and two thirds in 2017, 181 and two thirds in 2018. So you can really compare the uh, outside numbers from that because they're so similar. Uh, 2017, he walked 60 batters. 2018, he walked 64. 2017 he walked or i'm sorry he struck out 180 in 2018 he only struck out 149 mm -hmm. and yet in 2017 his era was 4.33 era in 2018 3.2 i'm sorry 3.32 so uh, an era a run lower when the other numbers are kind of suggesting it should have actually been um the same or maybe even a little worse uh, his FIP 4.39 was the worst of his career since becoming a full-time big leaguer back in 2008. And then um, after his first spring training outing, he made some interesting comments about the projection systems like Pakoda, who, uh, you know, look at those peripheral numbers and say, this all does lead to the idea of a slight regression here. Um, he said that 200, he's talking about innings, is still his number. Um, I I did one or two things last year. I try to do every year, make every start and pitch 200 innings. I made every start. Now I just have to get those innings up. I don't care if it's hit to the warning track or if someone makes a dive and catch and out is an out. I'm sure you can go back to Hall of Fame pitchers and break down barrel rates and hard contact and FIP and all that other stuff. But at the end of the year, 18 and six, which was his record, and 3.30 ERA is still pretty good. Yeah, there are some interesting points in there. Uh, I see it from both angles. I actually wrote for Forbes uh, after these comments came out that uh, there's a case to be made that John Lester, with a few more good years, could be a Hall of Fame pitcher. And I laid out the case for and against in that story, which we can link in the description if you're interested in reading. But um, back to the original point. Um, it, is he the guy who just continues to defy the peripherals and put up the good numbers despite, uh, you know, the FIP and all the other things that you might get concerned about? I mean, if there ever were a guy, John Lester maybe fits that profile. Um, he's a smart pitcher and he trusts himself. He's got a ton of confidence and I feel like that's the type of moxie. Maybe I guess if you want to put a word on it, that you needed to be a successful pitcher. Um, that being said, too, uh, you got to miss some bats at some point. Like, that's got to happen. And if you continuously struggle at doing so and your only way to kind of be effective is get ahead of batters, you know, eventually people are going to get on top of you at some point. They're going to expect a, a fastball in the outside corner and, you know, be ready for that. And that's where kind of John Lester has to make sure that he's – in a way playing that game too with that pitcher. So obviously he could talk to his friend, Kyle Hendricks. He's an expert at that. I'm sure John Lester probably has more to share with Kyle than he does the, you know, vice versa, but um, he's got the gamers mentality that I think is going to allow him to stay competitive. As long as he truly can keep his body together, stay healthy. Um, I have, I mean, I was very flip floppy on John Lester at the beginning of the last season when he had that first rough outing against the Marlins. He didn't, he didn't seem to find the zone. It didn't seem like he was having a ton of pitches go his way. I was just kind of like, is this 
how the rest of the season might go. And obviously he had one of his better seasons as a cub, despite all these things. So uh, at this point, he's already been proving that he is that guy. So it'd be crazy to kind of go against it at this point. Yeah. I mean, the, I, I totally agree with that. It, it's hard to uh, just say, well, it, the numbers say he's going to regress. So he's definitely going to, um, I don't think I, at this point, if, given what we've seen from him that it, it, either of us could go there um, at this point, we're probably kind of just like, well, what you get from John Lester is what you get from John Lester. He's a guy who, you know, he needs the umpire to give him those extra, the extra this much on the corners. But outside of that, if he's getting that extra inch or two on the corners, he's probably going to dominate for the most part, um, whether it's, you know, balls hit in the air to the warning track uh, deep into center field that, you know, go 360 feet. You know, maybe that's how he gets it done, but he just seems to figure it out. He's and he's always been that guy. He he's made comments like that before, talking about you know it doesn't matter if he hits a scorcher if it goes right into someone's mitt. And yeah, that's a good point. Um, that's not necessarily like I don't know. John Lester, very smart person, very confident. He's always been bullish on stats. He's always kind of pushed the statistician away when they've kind of been like, hey, have you thought about working this pitch in or using this pitch in this counts? And he's just kind of like, you know what, I've got it. I've got it figured out. I know what I'm doing. Um, at some point you kind of have to be like, you know what? Yeah, maybe he does. So what do you guys think about John Lester? Is he going to progress like the peripherals and the projections say he should, or is he going to be just basically the guy he's been since signing with the Cubs of four years ago? Uh, just a great pitcher who finds a way to get it done. Let us know in the comments down below. Also be sure to go click that subscribe button. If you like videos like we're doing, uh, you can follow the podcast on Twitter, which we just launched uh, our Twitter account, talking Cubs show. Uh, we are also individually on Twitter. I'm Ryan Q. Davis. He's Sean R. Sears. Thanks for watching, and we will talk to you guys again next time.